Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Have you ever used Signal Messenger to communicate with your friends? Have you ever used the F-Droid store on Android rather than the Play Store to download a weather application that does not have ads or inbuilt spying into it to subsidize it being free? Have you ever used Tor Browser to visit a website like TikTok because you did not want to be fingerprinted using your normal browser that you use to go everywhere else? If you've used these applications before, this might just be supporting evidence in a court of law someday that you are a terrorist. I'm not kidding. I'm not making this up. This comes straight from the DGSI. The website I'm going to be reading that reports this is a website in another language. So there is a little bit of Babelfish going on here in my in-browser translation. So please do correct me down below if you believe I've gotten anything wrong. I'm going to link to the article. It's going to be very difficult for me to not get mad as I read this, so my apologies if I lose my shit as I'm going through this article. Also, I'm just going to say up front, I did not look into the political history, nor did I look into the criminal history of any of the accused because I don't want to be biased in that way. Maybe they're the squeakiest clean people that have ever lived, or maybe they have a rap sheet longer than Apple's list of design flaws. I don't know. And I'll be honest with you, I don't care. What matters here to me is not the criminal history of the accused. What matters to me are the actual arguments being presented in a court of law to justify calling somebody a terrorist. And frankly, I think they should scare you as well. Let's dig into the article. The charge of terrorism is forcibly rejected by the accused. The latter denounce a political trial, an incriminating investigation, and a lack of evidence. They point in particular to decentralized remarks in the use of trivial facts, sports practices, digital practices, readings, and music listened to. For their part, the police recognize at the end of the investigation and 10 months of intensive surveillance, no specific project had been identified. It says here, and I quote, all the members contacted adopted a clandestine behavior with increased security of the means of communication, encrypted applications, Tails operating system, Tor protocol allowing anonymous browsing on the internet and public Wi-Fi. I, I use Tor to visit TikTok. If somebody sends me a TikTok link, I am not opening that shit in my primary browser. I am opening that in a fresh Tor window. Encrypted applications. I use Signal every day to speak to my employees and my friends. Tails is a hardened version of Debian. And public Wi-Fi is something that all of you use when you go out to get coffee. You are not a terrorist because you take part in any of those activities. You are not a terrorist if you take part in every single one of those activities, nor should that ever be used as supporting evidence that you are a terrorist. The use of applications such as Signal, WhatsApp, Wire, Silence, or ProtonMail to encrypt communications. We use ProtonMail at work. The use of tools to protect your privacy on the internet such as a VPN, Tor, or Tails. I use Tor to visit TikTok. I use a VPN to get around geofencing. Let's be real, so do you if you live in another country and you want to visit a website that blocks other countries. Protecting ourselves against the exploitation of our personal data by GAFAM services such as EOS, Lineage, or F-Droid. I have used Lineage, I have used Graphene, I have used Calyx, and I have used F-Droid. Not because I am a terrorist, but because I want to download a weather app that does not spy on me or advertise to me in exchange for giving me the weather for free. And it's hard to find that in the Play Store. It's easy to find that in the F-Droid Store. That does not make me a terrorist. Encryption of digital media. This is cited as one of the pieces of supporting evidence that this person is a terrorist. Encryption of digital media. I encrypt all my digital media because if somebody breaks into my home and grabs a server out of my closet, or grabs a hard drive, I don't want them to see conversations that I had with my girlfriend six years ago that I have screenshotted. I don't want them to see pictures that they're not supposed to see because that is my private data that does not make me a terrorist. Dare I say it makes you a terrorist for implying that I'm a criminal for wanting privacy in the comfort of my own home. Organization and participation in digital hygiene training sessions. Everybody by fifth grade should have undergone digital hygiene training sessions because every site is trying to fingerprint you, every site nowadays is trying to track you, every application nowadays is trying to track you and figure out as much about you as humanly possible to build a profile on you that will be used for God knows what later. I am going to ensure that my children before the age of six understand best digital hygiene practices. Before they get one of these, my child is going to have a very long conversation with me on how the internet really works because the internet, the way it works in 2023, is very fucking different from the way it worked in 1997 when I first got a real, real desktop computer. My kids are not going to be exposed to the internet the same way that I was because I don't want them being tracked and having a profile created about every single thing they do from a very young age. That does not make me a terrorist. With how many companies spy on you, build profiles on you, steal your data, digital hygiene training is something every single fucking American should learn before they hit third grade. 
In this document, by which the DGSI requests the opening of a preliminary investigation, we can read, all the members of the contacted adopted clandestine behavior with increased security by means of communication, encrypted applications, Tails operating system, Tor protocol allowing anonymous browsing on the internet and public Wi-Fi. This sentence will appear dozens of times in the file, written by the DGSI. It will be taken up without any recovery by the magistrates. In the first place of which the investigating judge, but also the magistrates of the Chamber of the Instruction and the judges of the Freedoms and Detention. During the investigation phase, the amalgam between encryption and illegality is mobilized to justify the deployment of highly intrusive means of surveillance, such as the sound system of a private place. The DGSI considers them necessary to monitor telephone suspicious individuals who use encrypted applications to communicate. After their arrests, they indicated they are systematically questioned about their use of encryption tools and asked to justify themselves. Do you use encrypted messaging? WhatsApp, Signal, Telegram, ProtonMail. For your personal data, do you use an encryption system? Why do you use this kind of encryption? encryption and anonymization applications on the internet. The supposed link between encryption and crime is clear. Have you done any illicit things in the past that require using these encryptions and protections? Are you looking to hide your activities or have better security? In total, there are more than 150 questions related to digital practices. The mere possession of computer documentation is also retained as an incriminating element. Among the documents seized following the arrest and commented on at length are handwritten notes relating to the installation of a degoogled mainstream mobile operating system, EOS, and mentioning various privacy protection applications, Graphene OS, Lineage OS, Signal, Silence, Jitsi, Onion Share, F-Droid, Tor, Rise Up VPN, or bot, uBlock Origin. Possessing documentation on uBlock Origin is being used in this case to imply that this person might just be doing something illegal and wrong. Maybe they are if you believe that adblock is piracy. But that's a discussion for another fucking video. Elsewhere, the DGSI will write that, and I quote, with Babelfish admittedly, the presence of documents related to the encryption of computer or mobile data in a seal materialize a desire to communicate by clandestine means. Do they know that almost all computers and phones sold today are encrypted by default? Yours too. If you buy a T2 MacBook Pro, that is encrypted by default. Are you a terrorist? Are you doing something illegal? Did you buy a shiny new iPhone or S22? Guess whose storage is encrypted by default. You don't have to be a paranoid terrorist to have encrypted communications or encrypted media. Theirs too. Otherwise, this would also constitute a violation of the European regulation on the protection of personal data. As for Signal, would they accuse of illegality the European Commission, which in 2020 recommended its use to its personnel? And would they side with the terrorists, the United Nations who recalled in 2015 the importance of encryption for fundamental rights? Even the ANSSI and CNIL, which in addition to recommending the encryption of digital media, even dare to put technical documentation online to do so. Oh, this, this just, this, this is painful. This hurts. This is... And again, like, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're probably thinking. Let's look through the criminal history of these people. Let's look at what they look like. Let's see if it's somebody that I would trust or somebody that seems like they're weird or out of touch. Can I be honest with you? Can I have a hot take here? I don't care. The moment that you are invoking F-Droid and U-Block Origin in a document that is going over and implying that individuals might be taking part in terroristic activity... No, you are not a terrorist, nor dare I say it, are you a weirdo if you want to use end-to-end -end encrypted communication in an app store that has less apps on it that track you, your personal data, or have ads on them than the average individual. Dare I say it, in the 2023 world that we live in, that makes you more normal. That makes you a person that wants the same level of privacy that we used to have before we allowed these companies to take over every single fucking aspect of our lives. That is is normal. That should not be considered, you know, you're a weirdo, or you're a schizo, or you're paranoid. Remember, you're not paranoid if they're actually after you. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. Let me know what you think of this article. Do you think that these people are being paranoid? Do you think they're being unreasonable? Do you think that we should be using the material facts, that you have possessed documentation on Graphene OS and you block origin as a justification for kind of implying that you're a terrorist? Or do you think that that is a complete pile of garbage? I look forward to reading your comments below the video. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.